What's up, YouTube? Haven't done a video in a while. I'm not sure when this one's going up, but I finally have some three time. If y'all guessed it, it's coming. The infamous throttle body mod. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the throttle body blade that's in there right now, and we're gonna cut the diffuser off of it so that we get some better low end torque. First thing that we're gonna do is remove this k and N. I just use a screw, flat blade screwdriver, but you can use a nut driver. I've disconnected it from here. Make sure you get your breather. Kind of hard to do one-handed. This is the hole that we're left with. We're going to be fooling with this in a few weeks. The first week of April, I'm pulling this whole manifold off and we're doing the spider injectors in it. It's got, I'd say, either a, a bad fuel regulator or a crack in one of the lines. It actually sounds like a, a valve train tick or a lifter or something, but that, that's not the problem. It's a hole in one of the lines. So that would be a pretty cool video. I'll document that whole process. Like I said, I really would like to know what's causing the problem with the rough startup on this thing. Once I get the whole manifold pulled off, I'm going to go turn the key on in there. And uh, we'll see where it's pissing fuel out of. And we'll check that regulator in there. But like I said, this is the old SCFI system in here. It's a central port. And uh, we're going to put multi-port fuel injection in here. That's probably the, the best upgrade you can do to your 4.3 from uh, 99 to 03. But I'm going to quit babbling. And... In order to get this out, you're going to need a T15, uh, preferably magnetic. It's a Torx driver, Torx bit. I need to find a magnet so I can magnetize this one. All that, that should come out fairly easy. Once you get the screws out, you're going to need some red Loctite to put them back in. You're just going to rotate this and slide it out. As you can see, that's the diffuser right there. Once that's gone, there will be much more bottom end response. All right, something else I forgot to mention. You're going to need carb cleaner, a rag, and some Loctite. You really need the red kind, but this is all I got. So we'll use the blue kind. And uh, I got a magnet to magnetize my T15 Torx bit. What I'm going to do is loosen these up first. And then, like I said, rotate this and slide it out from the top. Screws are out. I'm going to rotate it and slide it out now. As you can see, it's sort of like a uh, sandwiching unit. So don't try and pull it up when you're taking it out. Just make sure you, you pull it straight out. And here's the unit. Pretty filthy. This is a piece we're after. I'm gonna hacksaw it off. Well, I think I'm out of Dremel blades, so we'll have to do it the old fashioned way. Alright, so I got it cleaned up for the most part. So, what I'm gonna do is take that hacksaw right there and cut this lip off. They have aluminum rivets right here that hold this diffuser on. Now, I don't have a TIG welder and I don't know how to weld aluminum, so I can't put plugs in here. So rather than just cutting the whole thing off flush with this plate here, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave this raised part and I'm gonna cut the lip off along the edge there. And that way I won't have any extra holes in the top of the blade making it idle funny. There's how I set it in the vise. Just like that. So I'm gonna come at it down like this. engineers that's useless for me clean that up slam it back in the truck and go for a test drive now that I've done filing off the burr sort of angled it so there won't be any drag I also clean it off real well you want to make sure that this hole right here is not clogged 
You need that for your idle. I went ahead and cleaned it off real well, made sure there's no aluminum shavings. And always remember, use WD-40 when you're working with aluminum. Alright, so we're ready to put this thing back in. It's the exact reverse of the way we took it out. Only we're going to put Loctite on these screws. There you go, reinstalled. You see blue Loctite pooping out of that one. But uh, it's really important you get this this lined back up correctly because if you don't it'll wear a groove in your throttle body and trash it. What I did was I left some of the old residue that built up on the blade from being mounted to this part. I left it on there. You can kind of see it. I left it on this end and on this end as a reference so that I knew exactly how to line this back up. So I did that. Tighten it down. Want to really make sure you check it. Check it good. Make sure these are in very tight, as tight as you can get them. All right, now we're ready to put the cane in back on and go for a test drive. We're ready to go. First start up with the new throttle blade. Start it right up. It's a good sign. All right, let's get out of here. Holy crap, it jumps. Got the back window open. might be a problem in the rain. Oh shit. Just tell me, what do y'all think? Doesn't this motor sound good for only being a six banger? I mean, come on. You gotta hand it to Chevy. They did something right. See well my uh, initial reactions of this throttle blade mod. They're pretty good. I can definitely feel it. I mean, I already had intake and exhaust, so I definitely recommend doing this. I mean, it's a free mod. You can do it for free. Just waiting at the red light here. needs new front shocks. I plan on putting a leveling kit on this truck. Two inch in the front, uh, four inch in the back. Jesus. 
thing breaks loose way too easy now. <laughs> Kevin's house. What's up, Kevin? She don't know which gear to put her in. Oh. Sorry, y'all can't rev it. The neighbors are home. Neighbors across the street. I'm sure they would complain. I'd say that's mission accomplished. How about y'all? Leave a comment. Well, it's day two with the throttle body mod. As you can see, it's raining outside, but uh, there's a few things I wanted to add to the video before I go ahead and edit it and upload it. Y'all have already seen the sneak peek to it, but uh, one thing I wanted to go over is that this truck's already had intake and exhaust, so it's been it's pretty quick already. Pretty good throttle response. And uh, when I first did the, the blade mod, I actually did notice a difference right off the bat. Uh, that The truck sounds a lot meaner at, at idle. The front of the engine sounds a lot more mean. You can definitely hear the, the K&N a lot better. But one thing I wanted to say is that if you're actually doing this for fuel improvement, Go ahead and reset your computer. Make sure you do that. Uh, once you reset the computer, your ECM will start instead of throwing on the new numbers and adding it to the average, it'll start averaging a new number for your fuel mixture. And supposedly you're supposed to get two miles per gallon increase if you're running the central port. So that's the claim from CFM Tech is where you can buy the high performance blade. That's their claim. But this free mod is the alternative to spending $40. Uh, I definitely recommend doing it. It's a free mod and it definitely freed up some low end torque. And really, I seem to have noticed it a lot more on the freeway. Going from 60 to 70, usually took a little bit more throttle to get there in the same amount of time. Um, now the throttle just seems a lot more precise. It seems like the whole thing is computer controlled, which it pretty much is. But it, it feels like a, an EFI system. So basically you can't really go wrong unless you mess up and you don't know how to use a hacksaw or something and you screw up the blade. I'm sure you could buy a replacement at AutoZone. It just made the truck quicker in general. It accelerates a lot faster. A few of you are already wondering about my tires. These are Kelly Safari Treks. Pretty nasty tread pattern for being a street tire. Yeah, they, they do pretty well. As, as you can see, I still got a tread left. Thanks for watching.